Ha. Oh, how about now? I think it's working now. Got this, so it should hopefully work. <laughs> Just make sure. Yeah, USB microphone. Is it still muted or is it working now? Let me know if it's working at all. If it's not working. Let's see if this works. Ooh, I think that's gonna work. Okay, there we go. We got this. Uh, save. Save those changes. Now we're good. Yes. <laughs> All the trouble I have to go in, go go through for you guys. <laughs> Such whiners. You don't want to actually hear me. It's bad enough you have to see me. <laughs> All right. So much better. Okay. So, <clears throat> big problems. <clears throat> big problems with the audio. How's that? Let me see. Let's get the screen back to where I need it. All right. Okay, cool. So this is where we left off last week. Sound is clear. Sweet. All right. Okay, so now that we've got this, I want to go through and, and uh, start pushing this some more. I don't like how the grooves on the tree are going straight up and down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by, you know, just taking my mask tool, control click and drag. If I control tap on it a couple times, I'm just going to soften that mask. And I just want to take this up and rotate. It's, uh, it's not going quite as far as I'd like. So just keep softening it until I get the uh, get the effect that I want okay and this is another powerful reason um, why I like to work with clean topology from the get-go you know like uh, like last week I got a lot of questions about that of uh, why I like to work this way instead of going through and and uh, sculpting it out and then doing retopology. Um, the nice thing about having the topology done is that I can manipulate it the way that I want and it's already clean and ready to go. So, um, so yeah, I'm just going to come through here and just play with this and try to get this to feel the way I want it to and then um, and then this should hopefully be good. Now I, I went through, so I teach classes on Tuesday and Thursday nights and uh, through Vancouver Animation School online, pretty cool. Um, one of the things that I showed class last night um, I went ahead and I did a version of this. So you can see this is what I did last night. This is what I'm working on now. Okay. Lots of things to kind of go through and play with and tweak and whatnot. But I feel like uh, we're not going to we're not going to go back to the version that I did last night, even though I kind of like it. Just want to push forward and move upward. So we're going to keep the one that we're working on now. Just having fun with it. <laughs> Trying to make sure I'm not like too off center. Too many problems. All right. I'm the problem child. You know, what can we do?
All right, cool. Okay, so what I want to do, I've got this hole right here. And I want to make sure, well first I'm gonna, I'm gonna fix the flow of that hole. I'm just gonna use my Z modeler. I'm gonna say close convex hole. Um, take my resolution down to one. Um, polygroup flat, converge to center. Okay, so these are just different functions, different uh, different ideas to kind of keep in mind. You have your um, you have your your action at the top. You have your target beneath that. So what is it? So essentially, what it is your Z modeler brush is doing? What you're gonna do it to? and then some modifiers. Uh, great to go through and play with it, I totally recommend it. And I do a ton, come on, there we go, close convex hole. And that's that's what it does, it essentially goes through and it kind of extrudes and collapses everything down to the center. Really, really nice. Okay, so here's something else we can do. We can come over to our, to our faces, just mask. Uh, Polygroup Island. You see now we got this. The other thing we can do is you know, with the gizmo we can just control tap on that. Whatever. Okay. Now let's see it in relation to... So it's what's nice is I can take it like this and then just kind of pull it up. Shrink it in. That is indeed a tree. Okay, so one of the things that we talked about we would, uh, uh, last week, that we would do this week, I'm trying to remember if I even wrote it down. I'm pretty sure I wrote it down, but I'm, I'm not sure exactly where I wrote it down. That's always dangerous. I've had so much, oh, here we go. So we talked about making an IMM brush with branches. Um, so maybe what we'll do is we'll go ahead and we'll do that now because um, it's something that will be helpful to us as we're developing this tree. Um, let's say crease edge loop partial, hold alt to be able to uncrease it. Cool. Okay. Ah, this is something that bugged me so weird to me that that happened anyway so let's go through and let's just kind of fix this trying to come through and make sure that I can get this so that it's not weird and crooked and whatnot like that. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and mask that. Since we have just that portioned out, I'm just going to come over here and do the easy thing and say polish. <laughs> Actually, let's do it like this. Let's, let's hit inflate. Oh, interesting. Okay. That's better. One of the things that we could do is we could go in easily and we can uh, just redraw out this root. Not a huge deal either way, but um, yeah, because it's, it's just kind of tricky with how crazy it got. <laughs> Okay, 
just try to smooth it out some so that it's not so lumpy. Um, yeah, I mean, if you, uh, Tea Sipping Zombie on YouTube is asking, are you allowed to send you 3D work for critique? I mean, if you have things that you have questions about, or if you want um, my feedback on something that, that you're working on, yeah, totally, totally do it. There's a, um, there's a young man from, from Brazil that sent me his, uh, his work the other day, and I, you know, went through and gave him some feedback, and, and he's doing a great job going through and, and, uh, very, very aggressively, uh, working on it and, and making it super, super cool. Um, he's 15, he's already getting a jump start on his, uh, on his career. I didn't even learn about ZBrush until 2012. You know, it's just uh, you know seven years ago. <coughs> it wasn't until I had uh, <laughs> graduated college, <laughs> which is funny because uh, the school I went to, Brigham Young University, um, now they're having classes on ZBrush, so it's I think it's kind of cool. How's everybody doing? You keeping away from the from sickness and the flu and the cold and all that? <laughs> Cause we're not. <laughs> it's kind of sad. My um, my son came in this morning to yeah, you know, just when it was time to wake up, and uh, you know. I just didn't feel like getting up this morning to go to work at six o'clock, and so I decided I'd, you know, just ride through traffic with the rest of LA, <laughs> and uh, when um, when my son came in and laid down with us in in bed, he one he had a fever, two he plopped out really nasty vomit and it was just bad but you know, he's doing a little bit better now he's in bed and hopefully he'll be right as rain tomorrow but we'll see okay let's go ahead we're gonna jump over into our um, we're gonna get a, a z-sphere Okay, so we're gonna pop over here, grab Z Sphere. Where is it? <clears throat> okay, so what's nice with this, I don't want to have symmetry turned on. If I have symmetry turned on, it's going to affect how my um, how it draws out. So just uh, just really nice and simple. I'm gonna come over here, let's say. Something like that. Let's pull this up. So Z spheres, if you're uh, if you're familiar familiar with them, great. If not, bummer. Just kidding. <laughs> um, if you're if you're uh, not familiar about <coughs> Z spheres, um, then I would, uh, I'd, I'd recommend going through and playing with them. Okay, it's a very, very useful tool. Uh, a lot of things that you can do with it. So I'm just going to kind of pull that out, I'm going to pull that out. Okay, so I mean, right now, you can tell, I mean, it doesn't look like anything that I can sculpt. It doesn't look like anything that I can model on or anything like that. If I hit A, you'll see that it's it's automatically going through and turning this into a Dynamesh <coughs> uh, mesh. This is, this is kind of a new default for ZBrush over the last version or two. 
Um, in fact, I'm going to turn off line for a second, just so you can see it, nice polygroups too. And the polygroups will stand for each of these sections. So if you have your polyframe turned on while you're working with your Z-spheres, um, when you hit A to be able to see the preview, you'll see that those polygroups stick with it. So if I want to make it so that it's not in um, this Dynamesh mode, you just come over to Adaptive Skin, and you take this Dynamesh resolution all the way down to zero. So now you hit A once to get back to your Z-spheres, hit it again, and now you've got actual topology to work with. Okay, so this is uber helpful. <laughs> I, I cannot uh, stress to you how helpful this is. Now you can come over here, you can control your density, okay? Um, and you can also come in, if you're, if you're familiar with how the, uh, the other, or the old adaptive skin, the old Z-Sphere stuff used to work, you used to have this uh, classic skinning option. You can turn that on. Now if I hit preview, you'll see that it's just this simple block, okay? Um, it's something to play with. Okay. Something to play with. But yeah, so it's it's really, really fascinating. So I think I'll probably just leave it something more like this. Eh, maybe not. Take this and maybe try to hmm. Oh well. <coughs> the other thing that we can do is that since since we're still kind of early in this branch and looking at this branch, we can come over here and we can keep drawing in new pieces. Um, so let's kind of draw in a new one. Let's see if we, we can use our regular um, manipulator tools up at the top too to be able to make it so that, um, you know, be able to move the spheres around. And if we feel like this is too long, either we can use our move tool, we can bring it back, or we can use our draw tool using a hidden Q. We just click in there, and we can just kind of click and manipulate that. Really helpful. Um, okay, so I'm just going to come in here. Let's see. Let's see if I can scale that down a little bit. Let's scale this one down a little bit. And maybe we'll uh, we'll take this move. what I'm doing to be able to pull it out like that is that I start drawing it out um, you know so I just I just click and start dragging and when I get it to the size I want I hold control well and I'm like not letting go of my mouse or my cursor at all and I just click and drag and it'll pull it directly out from the from the sphere that it's attached to um, Control, pull it out. Control, pull it out. Okay, and you can you can create really really um, crazy systems using this sort of technique. 
Um, my favorite technique for being able to create, oh, that's, that's too big. Uh, for being able to create branches and things like that is just using my curved tubes brush uh, but purely for the sake of um, you know, experimenting and playing around and making sure that I don't forget how to use a stinking tool uh, plus it was a suggestion from last week and I was like you know that could be cool let's, let's try it out Do something like that and then pull it over to the side or something. I don't know. Um, now would be a cool time to open up some reference, but <laughs> I'm feeling lazy with the reference right now. Let's come over here. Let's test it out. Wow, look at that. Okay, so I'm gonna turn off use classic skinning because this is gonna get me a little bit cleaner of a result here. Now I wanna experiment about, let's try these, global radial density. Okay, so it's just saying the number of spans around. Um, so I want to keep eight proximity tolerance. Let's let's try changing that up. I have no idea what that's actually doing. So we're just gonna like this was at 0.5. So let's just change it back. It's like there used to be, or not that there used to be, but something that would be helpful is being able to control how many spans happen along the um, each individual polygroup. It's like I like more or less what it's doing through here. Um, what I don't like is having all of these funny edges kind of going horizontally across these different uh, different twigs. Okay, I need to make that bigger. Make that bigger. Make, oh, no, just the sphere, please. There we go. It's like if you if you click and you drag on the on the branch rather than on the sphere, it does everything below. <laughs> so that's something to bear in mind. Useful, especially if you want to be able to do a whole bunch of things all at once. But but yeah, so that's kind of something that that you want to bear in mind. Let's play with the, oh no, this max twist was something else. What was it that I wanted to do with it? Yeah, anyway, let's just, let's just keep this going a little bit. Let's come over here and say, draw this out, pull this out, draw one, pull it. Oops, that's a little too small. Okay. So now if I'm looking at this, I need to change some rotations. I feel like this isn't really working for what I'm wanting, so let's 
play around with this a little bit. Let's see if we can figure out something that we like. Let's, let's do this. Let's take... not sure that I like this extra branch sticking up so <clears throat> I don't want you know I don't want to get to this stage and think you know I don't want to have to go through and yeah you can manually delete the loops and that's probably what I'll end up doing just because you know that's all I can do at this point what I want to do to get rid of this branch though if I keep myself in draw mode um, just like with most everything inside of ZBrush, you have the alternative function using Alt. So I can hold Alt and tap. You see I just got rid of a sphere. You can tap, 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 tap. So you know, now we're back to this. And this feels much nicer to me so far as a branch goes. Okay, so I'm gonna keep this, okay? And this, 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 this is kinda cool. Okay, let's uh, Let's take this and let's kind of scale this up some. Let's scale this up some. Get it, get it, get it, get it. All right, there we go. Check that out. Okay. So now that we have this, we have a couple of different ways that we can actually turn this into geometry that we can use. So one way you can come up here to the to the top underneath tool. And you just hit make poly mesh 3D. So now I've got this and it's geometry now. I can do whatever I want with it. Really, really helpful. Um, and then, you know, like like what goes to Christmas Future on Twitch was saying, you can come over with your Z modeler brush and you can use your uh, insert single edge loop function. Hold Alt and you can just go through and click, 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 click. This gets really, really tedious. So here's another thing you can do. Okay, you ready? I'm gonna say delete polygroup island. Okay, so now I've gotten rid of that. But what I can do is I can, over the edge functions, I can change to bridge, two holes. I can say um, polygroup flat, minimum resolution. Now when I click one, click two you see it got rid of a ton of edges okay and that would be a lot quicker a lot easier so I'm going to get rid of that boom boom there we go um, this is one that I'm going to have to go through and figure out a different something to do same with these okay but I can go like this and we'll go boom boom same here, and we just keep working our way around. Um, this isn't the most practical thing to do, um, and it's not 100% ne uh, necessary either, but uh, two things. This, uh, this gives you kind of insight to the, to some tools that are available to you. Um, Let's go ahead and do something like that. Now we can close that off. Yeah, we'll leave it. Whatever. It'll be fine. <coughs> Same things with these. So we just go through, delete, bridge those together. Oops bridge those together wow just barely getting uh, um, just barely getting a message from Facebook is Facebook really that far behind I mean we're we're what 15 minutes we're a half hour in oh no do here 
Okay, so... Good. <laughs> it's always so hard for me um, understanding that you know, different uh, different places, different um, sites are kind of behind other sites. I was listening to uh, to a video earlier <coughs> about repetition in music and how music is getting more and more repetitive. Um, the reason I find it funny is because personally, you know, I feel like it can be a good thing and it could be a bad thing. It depends on the song. Um, generally I don't like it when a song is way too repetitive because then it becomes monotonous, but, um, one of the things that this guy stated in his research was that, um, Oh shoot, I didn't want to get rid of those yet. Because I wanted to be able to bridge first. <laughs> um, one of the things that he saw... Hey Wilfred! <laughs> <coughs> one of the things that he said in his research was that... Uh, well, he, he was looking at it and songs being um, like easier to compress. Uh, so song file sizes will be bigger if the song is exactly, it is completely different all the way throughout. But he said that, uh, <clears throat> that if the song is really, really, you know, exactly the same at a lot of different parts of the of the song, then then uh, then it'll compress to a smaller file size. And he went through and talked about all sorts of different little songs and showed how they compressed. And oh my goodness, it was it was just funny. <laughs> I wish I could remember the uh, the ones that he talked about. But it was funny. It was, it was one of those TED Talks. Okay, so... I'm just going to Control-Shift-Tap on that. Yeah, this, so let's, let's do this. Let's get rid of that piece. Go geometry. <coughs> and not Dynamesh. Oh my goodness. Oh, interesting. Okay, so now I should have the options that I needed. So this was interesting because the other day I had seen somebody go through and just use you know something as simple as that, um, you know, having just said you know make polymesh 3D, uh, and use that to be able to make you know 3D geometry, 
and it didn't work. If you guys, if you guys noticed just now, um, I had to go through and actually come back down to the adaptive skin and hit uh, make adaptive skin. But yeah. Dafu. Missed a bit. How is your changing those branches with so many polygroups to the simplified version? Where there are a few. Um, real quick, actually, let's let's take this. And we're just gonna append this here. The skin. Okay, so now you can see I've got this skin, this uh, the skin, this branch, <laughs> this adaptive skin in there. <clears throat> Real cool. All right. So I might, I might actually need you to clarify your question, Dafu. I missed a bit. How is it changing? Yeah. Is, does that answer your question? What what uh, Ghost of Christmas Future uh, answered? Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Kind of what uh, Ghost of Christmas Future is saying is just so that I have fewer, um, fewer polygons, fewer points to to manipulate. Um, and actually, let's let's take this since uh, since we have it. I'm gonna kind of bring it over into place. Oh, I should have duplicated it. Control Shift D. We'll go back to this one. Okay, cool. So now we can make this one nice and big. I say delete poly loop. Okay, let's just kind of delete these things. All right, here we go. So now here's what I want to do. We're going to merge down. Yeah, it's fine. Wrong branch. Oh, come on. Split hidden. I thought for sure that I actually had things worked out today. This is just embarrassing. Okay, now we can merge down. Now we're good. So, what I want to do okay, is take this, bring it in. I don't really want it to be that big. Maybe something like that. We'll see in a minute. Okay, so what's nice is now I can go ahead over here, bridge two holes. We're good. And now we've got our branch as part of <coughs> uh, part of our tree part of your tree all right look at that look at that it's so pretty let's get rid of some of these extra edge loops that i don't want i don't want it i don't need it I don't have to go through and do it with all of them just because it doesn't really matter a ton. And if I if I were to go through and, and get rid of all of those edge loops, then it'd just be, be uh, too boring. So let's come over here. Let's figure that out. One of the things I want to do, I want to kind of 
even out how this tapers. So it start it goes to really pretty thin right here, uh, and it goes to pretty thick over here at the base. Yeah, so so bridging to hidden polys is definitely a thing, and it drives me nuts. Um, it's one of those things that you can either separate your your um, your sub tools, or let me see scale poly loop. Let's let's go to polygon center. That'll be better. Um, and it's not doing what I want it to do, so I'm just gonna have to figure out something else to do. Anyway, um, so one of the things that you can do, you can keep things in separate polygon or in separate uh, sub tools. And that's really like the easiest way to make sure that you don't bridge between the wrong edges. I'm gonna get all brushed up. Yeah, it was funny. So those of you who are on or have seen uh, the stream from last week, <laughs> I was wearing a Substance Painter T-shirt, I think. And uh, yeah, I feel bad. <laughs> it was dumb. Um, So make up for it by wearing all the ZBrush today. But yeah, I mean, bridging to those hidden polygons. So does anybody have a really good solve for that? I think that that's a good... Um, <clears throat> a good... You know, a good thing to bring up. Um, does anybody have a good solve for being able to uh, bridge to? Because so 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 what he's what he's saying is that occasionally you'll have maybe you'll have just one poly group visible, and you're using your bridge tool. Maybe I want to bridge from here to here or something, um, and it will go through and it'll bridge to a face that's part of part of the sub tool but it's not connected you know it, it's hidden it's it's bridging to something that you don't want to bridge to um, does anybody have any any wisdom they want to share with uh, share with us on the matter yeah you could do a flip so you can come over here and you can come to uh, display properties. You can say flip geometry, so you can see the uh, the inside, and that'll help you to kind of better select what you're what you're wanting to bridge to. Uh, you could also do double. So say you're here and you've got this. Now you can see both sides of the of the mesh, the inside and the outside. Um, mutated deli <laughs> jellyfish. Delifish. You're a delifish now. <laughs> okay, I'm going to try to do something like this. Let's get rid of that piece. And actually, what I, what I want to do hit W, control, click, and drag. Oh, shoot. Let me see. It seems like there's a way to be able to kind of duplicate the faces. Oh well. So what I'll do is let's come over here. The J is silent. Mutated delifish. <laughs> Okay, so this this is that funny little tree that we had before. I don't know if we'll use it or not. 
so far I'm enjoying just this one, so we'll see. Um, Control Shift D. What I want to do is I want to have just this branch. So I'm going to delete hidden. And now it could be worthwhile. Let's uh, let's flip it around. Just to kind of get a little bit of variation. This is this is a little bit of a trick, okay? Um, you know, to be able to get branches that are, you know, you know equal in detail, <clears throat> but that don't have, you know, you don't have to spend all that time making a whole other whole new branch. A whole new branch. Okay, so let's go back up to this. We'll say merge down. Let's come over here and say delete poly loop. That'll work. Okay, now we can bridge two holes. Boom. So now we've got a couple of branches over here. <coughs> I want to go in and maybe add another branch up here. So um, let's see how we can go about doing this. Now this is where I'm going to go ahead and introduce you to an idea. Um, there are there are a series of brushes available to you inside of ZBrush. Um, check this out. So, let me see, insert mesh brushes. Where are they? Yeah, I can't actually, can't actually see them. Oh, there we go. Okay, so there's like this <laughs> insert ear brush, um, insert H sphere, um, th there, there's, let me see, that's actually, those aren't the brushes that I'm wanting, though. Um, there's this insert primitives H. Okay, what this is, is it's, uh, it's an insert mesh brush with an open hole on one of the sides. Thanks for taking care of me there, goes to Christmas future. <laughs> yeah, Bomb BC, uh, 161, uh, this is ZBrush. Um... Yeah, uh, yeah. So uh, mostly for sculpting right now, what I'm what I'm doing is a lot of box modeling. Um, I mean, I I've used this software for for years. Places like DreamWorks, um, Disney. Now um, I've used it at Warner Brothers. It's a really really amazing piece of software, and it's very versatile. So, I mean, this, I like to keep things very low poly, and I like to do a lot of box modeling. Um, and ZBrush is good for me for that. I like it. Uh, one of the things I'm going to go ahead and do, I'm just going to keep getting rid of a few of these edges that we talked about before. Just because I don't want them. I'm going to turn this into an insert mesh brush. Which means I'm also going to want to make sure that I have the subtool named the way that I want it to be. Um, and since we're going to be going through and renaming things, I might as well go ahead and rename whatever's important, um, which would be you know everything, right? So that way I can just keep the uh, um, I can just keep the uh, you know, keep things organized. Better keep track of what I'm doing. Okay. <laughs> you know, it's totally fine. One of the things I recommend to you, though, Bombi, is that uh, is that uh, you should go in and look at like the um, what should we dig it? Yeah, the forty-five day trial. It's uh, it's free. It's the it's a full version of ZBrush, so you can go ahead and you can get all the functionality, but you're but you but you know it's just a limited time where you have that. <coughs> okay, 
So now this is pretty all right. I'm gonna to come to my top view, make, make sure perspective view is turned off. And let's go ahead and let's create insert mesh brush new. Oh, you know what? I forgot to rename that. So now I feel dumb. Branch zero one. So let's go ahead and we're going to append this to that. Create insert mesh, append, skip this until next start. Okay, so now I've got one that's called branch one. I can come over to the tree five, which is the same mesh, just different name. Go to brush and I can delete the mesh. So now I'm left with just the one brush. Pretty handy. Lots of professionals looking at Blender right now. Not really. Um, it depends on where you're located and uh, but yeah using your phone data to watch this. That's awfully brave of you. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna come over here. Uh, let's split point. Let's just check to make sure. I've, yeah, because I can see I've got multiple pieces here that have that same poly group. So, here's what I want to do. Okay, so this is this is going to be the uh, the cool trick for the day. <laughs> Hopefully, I can pull out more tricks than this, but you know, it's a cool trick for the day, right? A cool trick. <laughs> so, what we're going to do this brush that we made. Um, you can see the bottom is open. Um, it has it has this uh, this hole in the bottom. Okay, so yeah, yeah, definitely lots of cool resources for ZBrush. So it's definitely worth looking at. <laughs> Lag is spikier than a porcupine. I am so sorry. Hopefully it's not my fault. <laughs> Okay, so what I'm going to do is with this insert mesh brush, because it has that hole in the bottom, I'm going to click and drag it out and uh, let go. Now watch what happens when I control click and drag, control click and drag. You see that? It went through and like bridged the pieces together. Oh, you know what? Okay, before I do this, let's actually go ahead and... Uh, do this. I need to make sure that there are two different polygons. Okay, there are two different uh, poly groups, rather. Okay, let me see if I can try scaling this up a little bit and pulling it up, you know, things like that. Okay, so just we can get like a rough placement. Okay, but did you did you see what it is that happened the first time? So here we go. So control click and drag, and then control click and drag, and you see it bridges it together. So now that's all one solid mesh. It's curious to me that this got all super weird, skinny. What in the world happened? Okay, let me try. I'm actually curious if it has something to do with the brush modifiers. I might have to go in and actually look at what settings it attached with the brush. Um, can do some funny things sometimes. Okay, let's try this again. Let's actually look at the brush this time though, just to make sure that we know what's happening with it. Um. <laughs> I'm so sorry. It's so hard when uh, you're trying to use data to be able to, or you know, other, you know, your, your phone, the bulimic branch, that's so sad. <laughs> Um, in 
intensity. I wonder if I were to put that up to one. But yeah, trying to go through and, and uh, make your uh, your Wi-Fi work, you know, and, and or not your Wi-Fi, your uh, your signal, and trying to get things to to just be yeah, trying just trying to watch things, trying to learn, trying to do whatever it is that you need to do, and. Let's take this. Let's let's try. I think one of the problems I'm running into is that this branch was too far off of center with uh, with that middle with that bottom piece, and so it's not drawing on in the center. So I'm going to try doing this. Now let's try adding that again. Again. Create insert mesh. We hit append. We'll take the old one. Brush. Delete mesh. Okay. Let's try taking this down to like 50. I don't know. We'll we'll try this. We'll see. I see. I see. So that gets tricky. Okay, so click and drag out. Yeah, that's not going to work. So I need to. I need to keep my Z intensity up to a hundred. There we go. No, it's working. Okay. So now we can go ahead. Let's uh, let's pull it out some so that we get a little bit of space. Now we we'll go control drag and drag, and there we go. Now we've got the bridge happening between the pieces. So now what's cool? Now we can go ahead and we can modify this. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead. Let's scale. Okay, I'm just going to go ahead and let's get rid of these extra loops yeah okay this will be so much nicer of a of a tree branch base or a, a, a tree base it's funny at work uh, my boss makes fun of me because I like to keep groupings in like series of three or other odd numbers <laughs> um, but then you know he likes sometimes to see you know, groupings of two <laughs> and I just I just you know, I blame it on his English upbringing. <laughs> um, cool. Yeah, so that's nice. Now, one of the things that we can do is that if we have our brush and we want to be able to keep this, we can go to brush and we can say save as. And you can see I've already got a peanut. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to... In branches. We'll say save. Please. <laughs> there we go. All right. So so far this is looking really pretty cool. Okay. Now let's let's go ahead. Who's OCD with numbers? Or, or why is she OCD with numbers, I guess? Yeah, the auto bridging is really quite incredible. And it's, it's, a, it's something that I know about because of this, um, where did it go? This IMM primitives H, <clears throat> that's how that, that works. 
and it works by bridging to whatever polygroup it's drawn onto. Um, so you got to make sure that the polygroup you're drawing it onto is unique, that you don't have any other floating polygroup pieces, and then it'll bridge the uh, the hole to the edge of that polygroup. It's really really helpful. Um, it's a cool it's a cool thing to be able to do this. I am in B parts <laughs> for body parts, I assume. Um, it also does the same thing. It also has those those open holes along the bottom of the parts and you can click and draw them out and it'll bridge. I think it has like a dog head and a, and some human body parts and things like that. It's it's, it's kind of zany. Okay, so what I want to do now I want to add to the terrain. Oh, let's go ahead and let's finish naming our... Okay, so this is our ground plane, which is good. We'll keep that. Yeah, that should be good. That should be good. We'll keep it. We'll call it good. Okay, I'm going to hit D to put that in our smooth preview. Let's uh, let's modify some of these things a little bit. One of the things I want to do is I want to play with the flow of these crevices. And uh, what this does for me is it allows me to have a little bit more interest to what it is that I'm... Uh, oh, sorry. Shift F, not Shift D. Uh, a little bit more interest in my shapes. <coughs> Um, design is is tricky, uh, and figuring out design for an environment that you want to have a lot of appeal and character, and you got to think about uh, what kind of environment this is. You got to think about um, how old, what story does it have. You got to think about where it is, what kind of water does it receive what kind of uh, you know does it does it have any kind of human or character interaction does it have um, all sorts of things what kind of wildlife lives there is there wildlife that lives there is it on a different planet is it something that we can relate to um, a lot of what you're going to create when you're building your own environments is you're going to have um, is you're going to have opportunities to be able to create story. And essentially, an environment is a canvas that tells a story. <clears throat> and so when we're... Um, this is a little bit too... Um, so when you're creating your environments, um, it's a really great idea to think about what does this environment say? How do how do we let our viewers understand where we are? Okay, so right now I'm at, I'm at the very beginning of the process on this environment, so you know, it's easy to understand what's uh, that. You know, it might not be as easy to pick up on where we are. Uh, I need to pull up my my reference so we can have that available just in case anybody forgot <laughs> okay Bombi was saying yeah, I remember my first big project in Blender took five and a half hours uh, first month made an extremely detailed earth went to render but I stupidly didn't save for three hours and blender crashed and I lost three hours of work yep <laughs> that's one of the nice things about ZBrush is that it'll go through and, and it'll I mean you can you can set the auto save in most programs I didn't want that um, you can set the auto save in most programs uh, to be kind of whatever it is that you want it to be. Uh, inside of ZBrush, I think by default you get every 20 minutes while you're working, and then while you're at an idle, so or you know while you're 
um, like if you don't touch your computer for a minute, 60 seconds, then it'll go through and it'll it'll do its uh, auto save again. Um, it's really really handy. I know that I try to have that always set with my Maya files at work um, because I, that that's just it saved my butt so many times, so many times. Okay, let me see. I'm trying to decide. Yeah, I, I think I want to. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to take... Come on. I'm going to take the top half of this tree. And I'm just going to kind of like lean it. Maybe not quite like that. Let's see, something like... Oops. It's always tricky when it wants to do that. But yeah, auto save will totally save your butt. It'll save your bacon. <laughs> thanks, thanks for tuning in, Bombi. Um, kind of sounds like you're saying Bambi in in uh, with a with a UK accent, you know. What's your name? I'm Bombi. <laughs> I'm Bombi. Bambi. 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 More like Bambi, I guess. <laughs> 11 o'clock, school night. Yeah. Man, it's. Oh, so your central time zone. Not bad. Not bad. I guess we can let you go. Thanks for tuning in. Yeah, I'll be here every Wednesday. Every Wednesday between uh, 8 and 10 uh, Western. Wow, I got Nightbot. <laughs> cool. Yeah, I know that's, that's a great thing is to be able to bring up the schedule automatically when I say it. I think that's the first time that I've had the bot bring out the schedule like that. It's pretty nice. But yeah, there are a lot of cool streamers to check out there. So so I would recommend going through and just kind of surfing through some of the uh, cool. That's a good habit to be in, Bombi. <coughs> Tuning in as often as you can. That'll be that'll be a great thing to do. Um there are a lot of people that are like actually talented um you're kind of unfortunate that you tuned into me <laughs> just kidding um lots of really fun fun artists on the uh on the twitch channel what command do you remember what command do you remember goes to christmas future Okay, so far that tree is starting to finally look like super epic. <laughs> and it's funny, cause, so just to be able to, to compare where it is, okay, so and actually let's uh, get rid of that, and actually I need to come in here and I need to turn off spotlight projection forgot to do that before okay shift s look at that that's where we that's where we started and this is where we're at now okay super cool <laughs> super cool to be able to to see how we progressed on stuff like this 
Um, the tree will actually, I probably won't develop it any further up than this, um, but we'll have to see. Okay, now what I want to do, let's go through and make sure that I can make the ground kind of feel like it can transition from something mountainous to something desert. Okay, so what I want to do is come over here. I'm going to mask these edge loops. Real simple. Control tap to be able to invert it. Okay, and then with my my gizmo, I'm going to hold control. I'm just going to extend this out. And yeah, we'll do it. We'll do it twice, just so that we can get a good a good length. Okay. Now I'm going to want to make sure that I have. I mean, right now I've got I've got kind of like this waviness going across it, this direction. I don't want it to be wavy going in this direction. I want it to be wavy maybe going more this direction toward the mountain. Um, and then I think I actually want this to be larger. So let's do this. <coughs> um, just kind of like randomly mask this section and kind of soften it a little bit. Oops. Okay, let's kind of put that in here. things. <coughs> okay, so I'm obviously getting a lot larger with my scale than I feel like my tools can handle <laughs> at the moment, uh, which is kind of a pain in the butt. I'm not really working to scale on any of this. Now, there are a couple of tricks, a couple of things that you can do. Um, right now, okay, so, so just to be able to show you, on your draw size, you have this dynamic function, where if I turn that off, uh, you can see my brush is like really, really big in comparison to my scene. <coughs> and now I have it at a small number. You know, obviously, if I make it like big number, it's going to go off my screen. Um, this is one way that I can go about kind of controlling my brush, getting a larger brush. One of the other things I like to make sure of is that under preferences and then under draw, I like to make sure that my max brush size is set to 5,000 just because that gives me much more flexibility. Um, <coughs> some of these other things I need to go through and, uh, and play with. Uh, discover what these things actually do but yeah that's that's kind of like the most important thing for me personally is being able to set those and take my focal shift up to somewhere around 30 on my move brush I like to make sure that I have kind of a softer fall off okay so with with this piece, let's go ahead. Hmm, you know, that's that's kind of a pain in the butt, but whatever. Mask edge loop partial, mask edge loop partial. So let's go ahead, take this, control, be able to kind of extrude that out. <clears throat> Pardon me. Okay, 
Okay, so one of the things you can do, and this is a cool feature that they brought in with the new with the new um, version, the latest version of ZBrush, is this Remember Dynamic Mode per brush. Okay, so I'm going to turn that on because for um, for this brush, for the Move brush, I want to turn off my Dynamic Mode. Okay, and then obviously I got to take my draw size down again. But now I can, that's the only thing that I think I, I dislike about about that is that I, I have to really go like little by very little. <laughs> it's one of those whatever kind of things though. It's the, it's, it's the lesser of however many evils you have to choose between, right? Okay, so let's go ahead and let's just do this because this will be easier. Since this is on a going to be on a mountainside, I want to. Well, let's kind of take this and kind of. Um, I want this to to be sloped. Okay. Um, and in here, so I want. I want these bottom layers as it's coming closer to the to the desert side. So this is going to be mountainside. It's going to have some snow to it, uh, with a little bit of the scocada, um, kind of coconut going into it. Um, and then out here, it's going to be more desert. So you're going to get some rock that has like the peanuts embedded in it, uh, which is why we created the uh, the peanut insert mesh brush last week. Uh, really really fun and I'm excited to use my peanut brush <laughs> um, I did put it up on my gum road by the way in case anybody actually wanted it <laughs> let me show you I guess if you um, let me go to oh, I thought that would work yeah, it's not working. Oh well, whatever. We'll figure it out some other time. I um, thought I'd gotten my display mode working. Um, <coughs> but it looks like it's having a hard time wanting to actually capture the... see if I can Ooh, my screen just went black I need to fix that hold on just a second dang it okay Okay, <laughs> I'm blind. <laughs> Just so you guys can see what I'm seeing. <laughs> this is what I'm seeing. I have no idea what's going on. Oh my gosh. What the frustration. Okay. Oh my goodness. Oh. Okay. That was really weird. Okay. That was really weird. Okay, so I got it back. <laughs> I got everything back. The funny thing, I have no idea what it is that Yeah, I can't see that either. No, but so the funny thing is, is that um, when I was going through and trying to get my display capture to work, uh, it made my whole screen go black. And it was just weird. And it made both of my screens go black, so that I couldn't see, I couldn't see Diddly Squat. <laughs> so I'll have to, I'll have to play with that. 
because I wanted to go through and, and show you show you the gum road real quick in case you wanted to be able to find that uh, that peanut brush but you know it's not a big deal so we're not going to worry about it okay so real quick I'm just going to come in let's insert some edges uh, let's insert a few along here Just get one in there. Okay. <coughs> so for right now, let's just kind of get this. We're just going to polish it out. video card doesn't die it's a brand stinking new computer <laughs> that'd be like the tragedy of the century it's a nice graphics card too I mean, it's it's a uh, so the computer I'm running is a uh, is a uh, um, an Acer Predator Titan 700 and uh, the reason I got that is because it gives me mobility and it also allows me to have the power I need to be able to actually work. <laughs> Ooh, had a cool idea. So I'm going to take this mountain and maybe the mountain can be chocolate because that's one of the things <coughs> That they did with Candyland. Let's let's actually pull it out. I'll show you the I'll show you the game board. Um, I'll just lay it out. Okay. So check it out. Okay. Yeah, up over here. You see, we've got a we got a mountain over here. We got Chocolate Mountain, okay, with uh, Grandma Gooey. <laughs> so, by uh, by coming up, I can go ahead and I can think about making. Oh, Happy New Year, Sumerian King. <laughs> Good to have you around. Um, I can make my mountain out of chocolate. Dude, that is so good to hear. That is so good to hear. I saw the pictures that you had painted it. It looked awesome. Looked awesome. Yeah, I, I still haven't. Well, I, I've, I've gone through and I've painted maybe one of my models. Um, but just one. <laughs> I, need to, I need to probably try to paint more. Just for the experience of it. But yeah, so so what I'll do is I'll uh, I'll come in and I will try to figure out what I need um, stylist or um, not stylistically. What am I what am I even saying? What am I saying? Uh, well, so I, I want the mountain to feel like chocolate sitting on the top of this stuff right here. Okay, so a lot of this is going to be reshaped and repurposed and re, 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 but not reheated to. <laughs> to 125 degrees Celsius. Okay, guys, what, 
What sorts of projects are you working on? What, 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 in what ways are you challenging yourself? Um, are you the kind of person that you like to make New Year's resolutions and, and kind of govern your choices off of those resolutions? Are you the kind of person that makes goals and then uh, has to hit reset every time you know, every day, you know, what's, uh, what are some of the challenges you run into to setting, to seeing your goals through <coughs> personally, uh, some of the stuff that I want to, to do, something that I want to make sure that I do consistently this year is finish work. Um, I feel like I too often end up with <laughs> go to ILM. That's that's a good goal. Now, are you wanting to go there to visit, or are you wanting to go there to work? Ooh, because that's a it's a pretty groovy place. Okay. Let me see. I want this to let's raise this up. Let's see if we can change the way that this flows. myself a deadline and think I can do it in the time frame but I always forget I need sleep and I end up having the tightest deadlines ever but I consider myself too slow at Z brushing so it's a good way to speed up okay yeah deadlines kind of help to put pressure on yourself learning how to make a finished piece I think that uh, one of my favorite resources is going through and watching the ZBrush summit um, I listen to, I listen to those super, super often, and maybe more often than I than I should, <laughs> but not as often as I'd like. <laughs> uh, so, so one of the things that I really like doing is hearing about the process that other people have uh, to be able to get something, you know, either similar to something that I've done or or even completely different, you know, and, and, and being able to hear how they got it, uh, see some of the things that they like to do. Like I, I just recently got this tutorial series or this process series from uh, Martin Verhoeven, a good friend of mine out in Belgium. And uh, he's, uh, he's got this really crazy design sense. <coughs> um, very, very grotesque, very macabre in his uh, in his materials choice. I like things really stylized and, and light and lively and uh, family oriented. And he's he's much more macabre and and, <laughs> and whatnot. I love Martin and, and his and his work. It's 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 brilliant. It's it's beautiful in its own in its own right. And. Uh, his little series goes through his entire process of how he starts it out, how he takes it through to finish, how he composites it. Okay, it's really, really cool. Um, oh yeah, I guess, I guess you did take the, the courses, didn't you, Mick, from, uh, from Shane Olson? Um, three weeks left. Yeah, yeah, I guess that would work. You can do that. You can do that. I can't wait to see it. I, I love seeing the uh, the 3D character workshop um, challenge results. There are some really, really cool results from this last one. Maybe it was the one before that I can't remember. There was a Halloween one. That one is really cool. But there was another one where, man, it was just, it was just unreal. Super, super neat. 
but yeah, it's something that I that I always appreciate is being able to see artists pushing themselves and trying to become better. And I feel like for me, that's inspirational, and it helps me want to be better. Um, Who else? Who else has goals? Art. <laughs> like your Bob Rossiness. Yeah, that's that's one of the things. It's it's funny because like with the uh, with the art station challenge, the feudal Japan one. Uh, you know, some of you might might be familiar with what I with what I did for it. Um, I really liked the idea of what I had and a lot of people really liked my character um, but I <laughs> it was it's always very intimidating to me seeing those challenges because um, there are a lot of things in the process that I just don't do because I don't ever have to um, so having a full character that has um, a full, full textures and surfacing, uh, the full lighting and <coughs> and uh, and whatnot, and it's it's all. <laughs> yeah, you never know if you don't go. You're absolutely right. Um, it's just it's just tricky. It's intimidating. Um, to say the least but at the same time you grow in your development sense um, in your ability to figure out what it is that you like and how to create it and and uh, I think that for me is more my goal with those sorts of challenges is trying to figure out my own flow my own process <laughs> Same, same with these sorts of projects. Okay. And I think I'm going to want to put like a big rock like this, but even larger, like over here. <coughs> and then have it kind of like tapering down out into here. Let me see. But yeah, so those are, yeah, make sure that whenever you're working that you save constantly. <laughs> Can't stress that enough. We were talking about that earlier. Um, Bombi was on. They were talking about uh, working in, in Blender is what they're, what they're using currently. Um, and how... Um, and how, you know, they, they were, they decided it was time to render and, you know, great. And they went ahead and set it to render and they, they hadn't saved in three hours. <laughs> and, uh, my, my heart just sank for them <laughs> because they said that it totally crashed and, and burned and nah, super terrible. But, uh, you know, it happens. Okay, let's see. Gonna pull this up a little bit more. Okay, so for this area over here, what I wanna start doing when I'm when I'm developing, oh shoot, that's not what I wanted. Um, when I'm developing <coughs> any kind of wrinkles or folds or whatnot, I like to use my masking a lot. <coughs> Let's see what the uh, pep talk says. Impress yourself today. Yeah, Mick, you gotta impress yourself today. Nothing you can't handle. 
Tough is your middle name. Flex your can-do muscles. <laughs> I like halls. Hopefully they'll help my voice. Okay, so this becomes really, really helpful to me. Actually, let's uh, let's go ahead and let's use insert. Let's come back and say mask again, just to make sure that that's all. Dude, it's funny. The uh, my printer has been in such terrible shape lately. Um, for those of you who know or may or may not know, um, I have a Form Two printer that I love to death. Um, but I I find with some of the recent uh, updates and whatnot that it's just kinda kinda tricky to uh, to handle <laughs> and so it's uh... ah, there it's coming So it's kind of out of commission a little bit for right now. You know, I've got like several projects that I really, really need to get on printing. Yeah, it's just, it's just, it's being finicky. It's being lazy. And it's funny because it's like your print came out really pretty nicely. Uh, like darn near perfect and uh, most well all of the other prints kind of around that print turned out terribly it was it's uh, it's been irritating to say the least <laughs> yeah but it's it's one of those things that you just can't do too much about I mean, it's <laughs> just kind of as the French say say la vie <laughs> yes yes it's your fault um, I, I didn't want to say it so frankly but um It's not your fault, bud. Be nice if it was, because then I'd have someone to blame. No, I'm just kidding. No, I'm actually wondering if it's it's a matter of just the uh, the project that I'm trying to print. I wonder if it's the project itself, um, which would be really kind of disheartening because I had to spend way too much time getting it ready for print. But, uh, you know, whatever. <laughs> okay, so through right here. Okay, so this top half is supposed to be mountain, and this bottom half is going to be desert. Okay, so this is going to be a snowy winter lun winter land. Uh, this is going to be desert. Okay, so trying to think of cinnamon sugar. That could be cinnamon sugar. That would be awesome. Not very Brazilian though, right? Now I, need, now I need to look up real quick. Because this is what we do. Okay, let's see. 
Persilian cinnamon sugar <laughs> dessert. <laughs> this piece is going to be so weird. It's like they have like these uh, these ball treats with cinnamon sugar on them. And I'm like learning about Brazilian dessert culture as I go along. <laughs> Let me see. So yeah. So maybe we will use some cinnamon sugar. And then we could put in some rocks that look like it, like those uh, those treats that I was seeing. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use my insert mesh brush. Let's go ahead and let's come over to IMM primitives. I always like to use either the polysphere or the Q-cube. Okay, some of these pieces, I don't even need them. In fact, I can go over to insert cube. And I can say brush, uh, delete mesh, because <laughs> I don't need it. I'm never gonna use it. Uh, insert sphere is handy. The icosa sphere is not handy. Art of Bella, Bella's here. <laughs> uh, this tetrahedron. <coughs> It's octahedron. You know, these these shapes aren't really necessary, but they're not killing me at all, so I'm not gonna worry about it. And I'll just leave the. I'll probably have to go through. Well, I need to in order for for those changes to take effect. If you modify, um, if you modify your insert mesh brushes anytime that you do that, you have to go through and resave that brush. To be able to replace it so uh, the tricky thing is is that if i were to go through and do that you wouldn't be able to see where i'm saving it to um so i'm not doing a screen capture i'm doing a z brush capture um but yeah that's that's kind of what you would have to do Okay. You know what? This is almost feeling a little bit too off center. So let's let's take this root. Let's come back over here. Let's grab this. Pull this up so that it at least has a little bit of stability. Because I feel like if if the tree were to be lean leaning like this. Um, Keeping in mind also that this is all a purely fictional environment with no semblance of reality. I'm just kidding. Uh, even even a completely made up environment, it's good to have some semblance of reality. Uh, let's take this and kind of proof it up. Von Buki. A Vega Seven. What is a Vega Seven? Is that a is that a printer? It's kind of, I'm just trying to like beef up some of these areas where it feels too flat. Just by running my inflate brush over it a little bit, I'm able to give it a little bit more roundness and depth. And I'm able to bring the, uh, <coughs> the new AMD card announced today. Very delicious. <laughs> Good deal. Um... 
it's able to bring those crevices closer together and kind of cl uh, close in on some of these. This is something I need to get rid of. I need to come in Z modeler. Let's get rid of this creasing crease. Alt to uncrease. Yes. I dig it. see what happened <laughs> so since we have a little bit of this kind of overlap look over here and the idea of this overlap at the bottom is to kind of make it feel like the uh, like the the candy is kind of sliding down the tree this is gonna be like a, a peppermint tree. What software do you use for rendering? Uh, it depends on what it is that I'm doing. Um, a lot of my renders will come through a software called Keyshot, which is a really, really handy piece of software. It's also really, really expensive, um, <clears throat> but it's a tax write-off for me, so. Let's take this down. I don't want that to be so large. <coughs> um, so yeah, Keyshot is nice because you can kind of assign custom materials and it works off of like a physical lighting sort of, uh, sort of format. <coughs> so if you have a, if you have a, um, What's it called? Like a, if you have an aluminum uh, material applied to something, it's going to react to the lighting setup as if it were made of aluminum with the right sort of shine and the reflecting color and things like that. Um, so really, really helpful. Um, but I'll also use, if I'm using Maya, I'll use Arnold. Um, Occasionally, you know, depending on what I'm doing, I'm not I'm not nearly as good as like Pablo Gomez at uh, using my PBR render inside of ZBrush, um, but he has some cool resources about how to use that, and that's something that I want to get better at this year is using the PBR uh, render. <coughs> um, which is just, it's just the, the standard basic render inside of ZBrush. So there you go, you get like a wireframe render. <laughs> okay. What time is it just to make sure I'm keeping track of? Okay, it's almost 10, man. It's so easy to get really, really lost in uh, what you're doing. <laughs> okay, so uh, at work, I learned that there's a term um, for rocks that you plop around your scene and they're called plop rocks <laughs> so one of the things that I want to do is we're going to create some plop rocks and and this might be um, the blue ribbon indeed this out. Oh, what do I have? I have the Tetrasphere. I don't want that. Uh, I want the Q-Cube. I'm going to drag it out. Hold control. 
Crouch Shift. Okay. It's odd to me that that came out to be tall like that, but it doesn't matter a whole lot. Just kind of shrink it down some. Okay. What I want is I want this to be separate. I want it to be its own thing. Okay. So let's um, let's come over here. Let's say split unmasked points. And here I want to come over. You see, it's it's not completely level. So if I hit my rotational box, you can see that that made it nice and flat, nice and even. <laughs> it's funny because uh, the guy who taught me the term is from the UK, <laughs> from right there in London, actually. So. <laughs> Oh, I wish I'd, I wish I could go through and do more on the dolphin. Um, I probably won't get to the dolphin much, if at, if at all, anymore. Um, at least not for a while. So, but uh, we'll have to see. I'm gonna get commission work. Really want to move away from the cartoony style and do detailed stuff like superhero statues. A good resource for it. I don't know if you've watched all of the the Z Rush Summit um, videos but go through and watch the one by Chris Costa um, let me get you the uh, the link because this one is phenomenal and it's it's so super helpful Yeah, go check out that link. It's it's Chris Costa. On the ZBrush Summit. <coughs> um, the reason he's helpful is because he shares information about his hyper-realistic portraits. Um one that it takes a really long time so uh for you mick <laughs> it's going to uh it's going to stretch you a little bit not getting something done in a month um <laughs> but um one of the things that i find helpful is that he goes through and he talks about hd geometry and how to use that and it's just it just it just blew my mind i it's not a feature that I'd ever played with, so I almost really didn't even know that it existed. I did put the link in the chat. Did it not show up? Uh, bummer. Um, but if you if you look it up, you you can find it pretty easily. Chris Costa, the ZBrush Summit. Um, <laughs> Maybe I can type it into to ZBrush, <laughs> make the geometry spell it out. Um, so part of the reason why I came back to environments is because I had labeled um, my stream channel, my, my stream title, as being environment focused. And... Um, and a few, a few people asked me about it. You know, it's like, why why are you doing a a, a dolphin robot instead of <laughs> um, instead of you know environments? Yeah, so so I went through one of the things that I did is I did a poll on my Instagram. So I mean, if you, you know, I'll, do, I'll do polls pretty regularly. Um, I'll announce things on Instagram, things like that. Um, look at that. Just like that, we made a brigadeiro. <laughs> I don't want it to be perfectly round, so I'm just gonna mess it up a little bit. Um, so 
there we go. So now what I can do is I can turn this into an insert mesh brush. Wow, so many brushes. <laughs> Maybe what I'll do, let's say new. Ah, oh, you know what, I need to rename this. I'm doing a really good job today, guys. <laughs> Brigadero. One. Because it's not number two, it's number one. And let's turn off perspective, because I, I made that mistake. I had perspective on. Okay, so brush, create, append. Let's take this, get rid of it. Okay, so now we're left with this. <coughs> Folder hype. Yeah, I can't wait for that new uh, new version of ZBrush to come out. That'll be so nice. <laughs> it was so funny when they revealed that at the ZBrush Summit. And everybody was like, yay! And, uh, and Paul Gabriel was just like, really? You guys are getting that excited over folders? Come on. You know, you should have gotten more excited for uh, the other things that we revealed. And <laughs> the UV tools were cool. The paint plugin was really cool. Um, let me see. You'll have to you'll have to watch the the uh, the presentation. It's it's pretty doggone cool. Um, okay, it's taking a while to actually save. There we go. I just wanted to make sure that I had <laughs> Yeah, you'll have to watch the presentation because it's really, really cool. Um, especially the UV tools. Hey, good to see you, Mick. Yeah. Yeah. I it it's it's one that I just loved. I've watched it probably a dozen times by now. <laughs> Not that I could quote it or anything, but but hot dog, I was so cool. Okay, let me see. I'm gonna come and try to create Now I'm, I'm trying to decide I'm trying to decide how big to make something like this. If I wanted to make some of these uh, brigadeiros in a, in a way of um, <laughs> cheers buddy um, If I wanted to make these brigadeiros, brigadeiros, um, so as to be like boulders, I'm trying to be careful that I don't make them too big because I don't want them to compete with this. I don't want to make it too crowded in here. I mean, I still have to figure out what I'm going to do for foliage on the actual tree. Um, you know, what I'm going to do around here. Um, so I don't know if it'll be, I don't know if it'll be appropriate for me to go through and put in some sort of boulders. It's one of those things that I really need to, to figure out and experiment with. But one of the nice things about ZBrush is that I can experiment with it. So let's just, uh, split mask. I don't need that on anymore. Let's kind of sink this in a little bit. 
So it's nice is that I can come through and I can very quickly and easily create new sizes. I'm just holding control and I can kind of plop this around a little bit. Now if I was taking these and trying to make them into actual rocks, I would probably come over here and oh not not move. I want to use like pinch. There aren't I don't use a ton of different brushes. Um masked control D control D okay so with this I mean I would want to come in and I would want to like essentially just pinch it around and uh, by pinching it around I'm starting to get this <coughs> this sort of feeling of rigidness rigidity Okay. Um, this isn't the kind of surface that I want this to be, so it's not going to end up being something like this. But just so you know, that's, that's a very, you know, when we were doing How to Train Your Dragon, you know, it's, this is kind of how your rocks would, would end up. <laughs> um, and the reason why something like that is acceptable for a rock is because um, it's not animated. It's not going to be uh, moving or minute or um, squishing. You know what? It's not going to be deforming. And so you can get away with doing things like that. Hmm. to figure out where to wrap this up and we'll come back to it again next week um, next week what I will probably do is we need to get some foliage on this tree maybe I'll do that really quick um, because I think it would be helpful to have some sort of something on here and this is, this is where I'm going to not really care about the topology and keeping the topology clean. So I'm going to take this. Let's uh, split the unmasked points. I'm going to rename it. Uh, tree foliage blocking. So I'm going to go control D a couple times and let's get rid of our subdivisions. So what I want to do, I'm going to start off by squishing this, but I want to kind of expand it out. So I'm going to start squishing and I'm going to hold alt and you'll see it's starting to kind of pull it out really really nice and handy tool so essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by getting this kind of more or less in the position I want um, and then I'll start using my, or my, my, I might start using Sculptress Pro. I think I should keep the rock hat.
every tree needs a rock hat. I think that one of the things that I want to do is I want to create this middle section, make it hollow. So here's what I'm here's what I'm gonna do. Okay, let's go into our Z modeler brush. And we're gonna go delete a single poly on a few of these. Yeah, let's do Come over here and delete poly loop. And we can get rid of that. Actually, let's uh, not get rid of poly loop first. Let's go ahead, let's say bridge two holes. That way we can just make sure that that's solid first. And now we can delete the poly loop. <laughs> and we can just kind of close our holes. Since I'm going to be doing using some uh, sculptress mode, I'm not going to care about having a nice clean close. Oh, okay. Let's check this out. So far, this is kind of interesting. And by interesting, I mean not really at all what I want. But that's why we keep going. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to take this section. If I hold Alt while I'm dragging that out, it'll unmask it. Now if this tree is really going to be peppermint, like a, a candy cane peppermint swirl. Here's what we're gonna do. Let's kind of come down here. Let's turn on Sculptress mode. I don't need anything to have polygroups at this point. So let's kind of come over here. Something that I wish was a little bit better. I wish that um, with Sculptress mode you could turn off the or turn on the back face masking. 
I feel like something like that would be exceptionally helpful. <laughs> Okay, so the more I do on this tree, the more I feel like I actually want to add Because like, I mean, for right now, it's just kind of chopped off right there. And, uh, doesn't do me a lick of good. <laughs> okay, let's take our trim curve and let's just kind of chop off that side there. So here's what I'm going to do. Because my shift and smooth can just kind of get rid of geometry, I'm just going to do that. <laughs> it's Ashley. It is Ashley in the house. Oh my goodness. Ashley Adams, how are you doing? <laughs> how are you doing? Did you stream earlier today or did you? No, you said you were going to take kind of a sabbatical for, um, for January, didn't you? How's work going? Okay, so you were live before me. Good. I'm having fun with it. Um, anybody who doesn't know Ashley Adams, A cubed. She's uh, she streams before I do on Wednesday. Well, I mean <coughs> Wednesday evening, afternoon, ish, ish. <laughs> um, yeah, she's super wicked talented. Um, one of my favorite pieces that she's done was this this really cool dragon piece where she used uh, the snake hook brush and she put an alpha on it and then just pulled it along in sculptress mode and it made this really cool painterly sort of swoop at the end of her creature. Oh my gosh, so super cool. So what I what I recommend, make sure that you uh, go and watch Ashley's stuff. Uh, she's super nice, so she won't kick you out like she did me. 
just kidding. <laughs> and then, uh... yeah. So, so essentially, this is this is kind of like what she was doing. She grabbed an alpha on her snake hook brush. Oh, need to make it big, and she's able to like take it and oh, it's like it's not powerful enough let me see I guess because I'm in turned off my dynamic mode I need to like do something like this oh come on you see I mean it's like it's starting to pull out like these kind of painter leads type strokes and so if you if you layer it in together, you get kind of like this painterly effect. I can't I can't get it. I can't get it. It's just not. Why isn't it not? Why isn't it uh, being as powerful as I'd like? Maybe it's just the sheer size of the of the mesh. things that I'm that I'm having trouble with though is trying to get it so that it's getting it to it's like it's not it's not grabbing it <laughs> dude Iro is the man he is the man. <laughs> the funny thing is, is he beat up sexy young man too, so, you know, Iroh is, he's just, he's just a brother from another grandmother. <laughs> Yeah, I think you might be right. So maybe if I were to try to take like a, let's try something like this. Maybe maybe it'll work if it's just beefier. It's like the thing is maybe maybe it was just that it was a she had a different stroke type or something. I can't remember. But I mean it was super super cool. Anyway, you can you can go through and you can play with all these different alphas and these different uh, stroke types. Yeah, look at that. That's starting to get something there. Okay, so you see that you're starting to get like this swoosh, <laughs> and it's and it's it's really kind of kind of cool because it's it's almost like this. Uh, super cheap way to get like these splash effects which this is this is part why I just absolutely loved it is because it got these really cool like splash sort of sort of shapes going on in here and that got too oh, that's that's not intense enough oops Just kind of come through and just smooth a little bit or something, you know, get some good breakup. But yeah, a lot of fun, a lot of fun. But yeah, so anyway, really cool, uh, really cool technique, and I totally recommend going through and uh, and watching that episode. I can't remember what episode it is off the top of my head, but uh, 
Wait, this is your first time watching Avatar? Wait, which book are you in? Oh my gosh. Which book are you in? Are you in, uh... Okay guys, this is like, everybody, everybody, uh, gang up on Ashley. Um for finally getting into Avatar. <laughs> there we go. Actually, like, you have no idea. It gets so much better, and if you're not all the way through the season, you you just don't know how much better it gets. Ghost of Christmas Future. That's not the right avatar. kidding like like seriously <laughs> midway through book three is my favorite so cool so cool yeah because that one's that's that's fire that's all about the fire nation going stealth and all of that about catching the the fire nation on the day of the blacks or um Yeah. <laughs> you guys are great. It was just kind of fun, like, listening to you all fangirling over there. <laughs> all y'all. <laughs> I think what I'm gonna do is like, like not even finish anything ever, and then just call it good when I get halfway through. That's about what everybody else does, right? <laughs> and let's come over here and let's use our deformation a little bit. I feel that like my voice is kind of going out on me, and it's not cool. I was hoping that that would be so much more powerful. I did know that about the uh, the James Cameron Avatar. <laughs> oh man, this this environment it might not end up being Winter Wonderland mixed with desert. I, I I'm kind of liking where this is starting to go, so this might end up being more fantasy mountain base <laughs> have a good night Ashley go uh, go watch Iro and see everybody do cool stuff I gotta probably get ready to bed now so um, 
thank you everybody for for coming and hanging out with me for a little bit um it's just funny to watch this thing evolve especially the way that it's evolved over this uh this little while here and uh and just and you know, seeing just the way that it's that it's grown and changed and we'll have to see how it how it uh how it changes from here <laughs> might totally just get rid of everything that I thought that I was doing to this point <laughs> do something completely new um, oh yeah I, I try to say every once in a while what it is that I'm hitting uh, for the for the key overlays and whatnot I just uh, I find it irritating looking back at the video to be able to see that stuff happening and it just just looks weird. I don't know I don't know if it's something like how I would actually turn that on. Uh so maybe I'll try a test run with that at some point, but uh you know, whatever. Uh see so you need to get back into it. It's so much better now than, than it was with one point oh. So much better. <laughs> Yeah, anyway. All right, guys. Yeah. All right, guys. Have a good evening. Have a good week. Uh, hug your loved ones. Work hard. And, uh, yeah, keep on ZBrushing. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in. And uh, yeah, I'll, I'll see you guys next week. Um, again, I'm around every week, every Wednesday evening uh, from 8 to 10 Pacific Time. And, yeah, we'll see you around. If you don't have loved ones, find someone. <laughs> Hug a stranger. Take care, guys.